Hello, everyone. My name is Julie McVeigh, and this is Unordinary Made Ordinary, where we talk about extraordinary experiences of everyday people. And today we are talking with Charlie Kelly. Welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so glad you could be here. It took a lot to get you here. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel privileged. Um, would you mind just sharing a little bit about yourself, a little background? Who's Charlie Kelly? Yeah, that's cool. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm an ordinary guy uh, <laughs> that, that found mediumship, but for many, many years, I, I just went about life as normal, you know, the regular day job, um, married children, you know, doing doing the thing, you know, getting getting bills paid and <clears throat> living life. Um, and then uh, around the, the age of 30, 31, maybe, um, started to ask um, questions of uh, uh, something else. Is there somewhere else beyond this? Mm. Um, and, and it was um, quite simple, quite easy, I suppose. So like once, once I started the research and once I started uh, looking into it a little bit more and got a little bit more uh, hungry for the idea, um, <laughs> you, you tend to look a little bit uh, out of the box, well in the box, you know, like just, just general research um, led me down a pathway of mediumship and development. Um, and, and that started around 31. So I'm 42 now. Um, and I've done this for the last sort of 11 years, uh, the last sort of 10 professional, because I took to it quite, quite easily. It, it seemed to just wow. be really simple. So yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, did you have any, you had no religious background or spiritual upbringing as a kid? No, zero, zero, zero. I, I, and th there is a little bit of me that thinks that's a little bit weird because oh. you hear the stories, don't you? You hear like, I've seen them from a child or um, I, I saw this or I experienced that, but I didn't have any of those, none of those kind of experiences. I'm quite a black or white individual, you know, it's just... I'm quite literal. I like things plain and simple and, you know, everyone knows what they're doing. And it was just really, really easy. I can't, there's no other way to say it. It, li it literally is the easiest thing I've ever done, mediumship. Wow. Well, so yeah. you're 30. What, what do you think was it that got you thinking there's got to be more? Was it being a father or something else? No, it was um, at the age of 18, um, I lost uh, someone like really close to me. So that, that would have been my little sister. We were on a, we were on a night out and um, there was a turn of events where she felt unwell and then unfortunately she passed. Oh. Um, so I was 20 at the time. Um, I was really angry at any kind of God or any kind of religion. I just couldn't sure. stomach the idea. It was just, it was like really sickening. I, I was just, you know, it kind of sent me off the rails for a bit. Um, so let's say a decade, a decade later, um, I'm well into a job and I'm working through the ranks of uh, uh, of employment and and I had a terrible accident with um with my eye oh um and that should have killed me the the accident should have the doctors said on a number of occasions that should have killed Joe you know you're lucky to be here and that sort of stuff and that made me question you know like oh. huh. is there is there something else is there um unfortunately or, or fortunately dependent how you look at it um, I had to spend somewhere in the region of 12 to 16 weeks um, in a bed yeah. um, looking up because I've got a, an eye full of silicon and that needed to be set and mm. operations and what have you. So you get a lot of thinking time then, you know, life isn't taking place. You're just sat in a bed staring at a ceiling for the best part of three to four months. Um, you start thinking crazy thoughts and um, all that kind of stuff. So it was just a, it was just time. I, I had time to to think. I had time mm. to sort of analyze the situation and um, ask the question: Is there something else? Am I fortunate to be here? And 
that seed kind of grows once you start nurturing it doesn't it so it's um you just go mm-hmm. you just go <laughs> looking you, you get answers don't you you find things that resonate and make sense to you as an individual which leads you on to the next part and more research and more <clears throat> more nurturing and it, it just starts to flourish at that point i'm just curious did you turn to prayer or meditation during that time uh no neither ne- neither of those um neither of those things kind of um they, they just didn't resonate with me it's like i don't i don't see um what we would term as a god as a, a as a christian god or anything like that i don't see it in the in in the mainstream way uh, as such so uh, prayers for me are just um, me speaking with my god in my way internally that would be my prayer Mm -hmm. Um, and and meditation I found um, too slow I think I think I found it too slow um, I'm a very high-paced individual, so I'm, I'm not like ADHD or anything like that. But you know, everything's go, go, go. Um, and meditation kind of frustrated me. I think initially, uh, initially, <laughs> like first looking at it was just like hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, so, <laughs> hurry up and uh, relax. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of like exactly like that. So very contradictory um in, in the sense so so neither of them were part of my early development neither of them okay I'm so curious uh, you know so how, what were the first steps after you're recovered and or were you doing things even before that yeah so <laughs> like it, it was kind of strange how it all happened because I kept walking into doors because I'm blind this side so spatial awareness was out out the window you know it was like I was all over the place I've I'd walk into a wall, a, a door, I'll trip on things that were in this like blind side of me. Uh, and I got really frustrated, really, really frustrated with it. And um, I, I knew I had to learn a uh, spatial awareness. Um, so I asked my, my doctor, my GP, um, what can I do um, yeah. to raise spatial awareness? Um, and he said, martial arts um, will mm-hmm. give you spatial awareness um and so that's what i did i went to martial arts i've done aiki jiu-jitsu and uh, kickboxing um to a very high standard in the end i really really enjoyed it 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 was a um a release of energy mm-hmm. um, um and, and sort of like the way people use a gym i was using the uh, the punch bags or the rings to sort of get rid of that that daily energy that we can create Um, And it was my my sensei said to me um, or or was showing me how to maneuver energy to uh, break the third brick or break the fourth brick. Oh, okay. Uh, So it was understanding energy a little bit better. Um, And as I was working and watching and trying to learn how to maneuver energy, I saw a lady. Um, So I think I just went too far. That, oh that, that's goodness. what it was it just a, a little bit too far uh, and I described this lady um to which my sensei was horrified because he said everything you're saying sounds like my mum but my mum is <gasps> dead my mum died like 10 years ago Whoa. um and and I was like well she didn't because she's there and as I turned around this lady had disappeared and I was like oh my god oh no that so that was the start it was kind of wow. very early on um, and then you go through, did I imagine it? Am I crazy? You know, what, what is going on? But the more and more I learned about the movement of energy, how energy works, mm. I realized it's just a, a, a thought pattern, a, a train of thought, uh, a disciplined mind could allow me to go there when I wanted to go there mm-hmm. and not go there if I didn't want to go there. So, um, yeah, so I owe that to martial arts, actually. So. So so the energy, the movement of energy Hmm. can open up this for anyone then? I don't don't think, I don't think it's open up for anyone. I think it's already there. I think it's just, you need an open enough mind to process. Um, So it's an understanding once the understanding is there. My my understanding of energy or or spirit 
uh, as I as I would refer to it, is an omnipresence. It's there every minute of every day. It's okay. it's around us. Hmm. Um, the difference between energy is there's a positive and a negative in everything that we do, and a spiritual energy is one of intelligence. Uh, it can communicate. So it was just having an open enough mind to find it, and uh, it's. Um, I wouldn't be picked just if, 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 if they were hand picking individuals to be gifted in any way, I would have been bottom of that list. It's, uh, it's just, it wouldn't have been me. I was, I was on the road to destruction, hating a, hating a God uh, for taking my little sister and right. they wouldn't pick me. So um, there's so many wonderful, nice people out there in the world that they would have been ahead of the queue. So I realized uh, the misinterpretation of the gift as such was I'm not gifted in what I can do it's just an open mind the gift is the communication I'm giving it to another individual um, so I, I think it's just a like a misinterpretation as such well did, so after that first experience <laughs> did you start seeing dead people or did you start yeah. thinking, oh, this is interesting. I want to develop this skill or. <laughs> At first I went straight to the doctor and was like, I'm seeing things that aren't there. I think, I think something's gone wrong, you know? Um, and so they, they were like, you're absolutely fine. Stop worrying about silly things. You know, they're, they're not that way inclined, are they? The, the, the medical uh, profession. So um, so they gave me the, the a scan and what have you to shut me up, um, and, and it it just um, nothing come up. I was I was normal. I was just normal. Um, and then um, I, I, from memory, it was uh, me just going, "What was that? Mm -hmm. What was that that made me look into it a little bit more?" Um, so I put, um, I made the, the biggest mistake by Googling, you know, like ghosts or something along those lines. Um, and you get the, the most horrific horror stories you can, you can right. imagine on Google. <laughs> um, and then someone suggested to me, if you thought about attending a spiritual circle, uh, where, um, where you can learn how to control it I think the term was mm. um, so I had no idea what that was it was but in in layman's terms it was just uh, a, a gathering of people with you know very similar ideas um, and that's what happened I, I found a I found a spiritual circle um, maybe half an hour away from my my hometown um, because I didn't want to be seen walking in or out of a, a yeah. spiritual center um, right. <laughs> so I, I went a few towns away uh, to try and uh, go anonymously uh, in there. Um, and then when I just thought about the spirit world, when I just thought about it, if you're there, you know, who are you? What are you about? Um, I had a, a, a lady step forward. She gave me her name, um, her occupation, her passing um, and told me she wanted to speak to her husband. Um, and her husband was in the room. He he validated everything. Wow. Yes, that's correct. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. Um, so I just developed it. I just got, I just was like, oh, if I can do this, then let's do it. So that I think that the that what what people don't teach you enough is the um is the discipline of the mind. Um so we old school uh people that are looking into mediumship the old school style of teaching would be open for communication closed for communication so it's an intent I'm opening up to work or I'm closed for work mm -hmm. not many people talk about that enough mm. um, so it was just my my um, my intent was to go to work to be a voice for the voiceless um, and then when I was done with that I could just go back to being Charlie um, mm. And I found that extremely easy. Uh, wow. Just, just one of those things that once I got the swing of it, you know, maybe six to eight weeks of, you know, I want to work now. I don't want to work. Um, mm. it, it kind of, I realized I was in control of it. So if I wanted it, it was on. If I didn't, it was off. And, and what did your, you were married at the time? At the time, yeah. 
what did she think of this? So she opened uh, to it and like, oh, okay, honey. <laughs> um, not really. No, no. she was, um, again, <clears throat> it's, um, I'm, I'm from a very rough part of the UK that the, the upbringing mm -hmm. would be uh, difficult. So um, it wouldn't be normal for someone in, in from the, the, the place that I'm from uh, to start doing spiritual things. So it was, it was not um it was not welcomed very very well uh with anyone it wasn't well oh well how did you do this then how did you op eventually open up to because everyone knows now i mean you're public yeah, but right. how did that's you go right. from being private about it to open up about it was it um, a gradual I think, I, yeah i think in the beginning i was a little bit embarrassed I, i'm not sure why I, I couldn't pinpoint why i'm embarrassed about it i think it's just because it was um part of my um, my daily routine or it wasn't it, it's not spoken about as freely um, at that time as 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 it is now it's quite free here in the UK you know so um, so there was an element of worrying about being judged for what I do or how I think and yeah. um, so, so that that it become a little bit of a, a, a burden initially because I was I was scared of being found to be doing it or um and, and people mm. people wanting or um like disliking you for it or mm. liking you for it it, it come mm. with its own baggage as such so it was um yeah it was it was difficult I, I realized once once I owned it it's mine here we go yeah um people tend to sort of not bother you're not in uh, in this like uh, element of balance where their opinion can sort of shape the future once you've made a decision people people either are with you or they're against you aren't mm. they and I found I found my my people for the time so there was people that wanted to support it and there was people that definitely didn't social uh, circles would start to change and that sort of thing so um very normal very normal I realize now it was just very normal um you know if you socialize with people that are, are very negative it's only a very short space of time before you start acting or thinking negatively mm -hmm. yeah Equally, if you surround yourself with positivity <clears throat> yeah um it kind of it kind of you know melts off onto you and you become a little bit more positive so i i realize like social circles are going to change they're going to change quick mm. uh, because i'm just changing as a uh, as an individual um you know it's my way of thinking was changing um yeah. you know it's uh, it, it, it's quite funny because it felt good helping it felt good like speaking about it it felt good um, and I wasn't used to that. I wasn't used to like giving stuff away or helping people. Mm. Um, it was it was very alien, you know. People people don't do things just to be nice. There's usually a motive or you know what you after. What is it you want? But, <laughs> but I genuinely felt good for just helping. I felt and I liked that feeling. I was mm -hmm. like this this is a nice feeling giving giving a bit of you away. Um, mm -hmm. and uplifting their life in some way was just beneficial for me as an individual so yeah I, enjoy, I, enjoy I bet that. I mean I can't imagine what what that feeling would be like to give somebody closure and yeah, absolutely you know what like for, even for yourself did you start having different obviously you'd probably have different feelings now about death and yeah, completely I mean that now. <laughs> changed right so yeah, completely are but you th 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 there is an element of gratitude towards the uh the traumatic experience i suffered with my sister there's a there's an element of gratitude because of where my life is today i don't believe it would be here if i hadn't lost her uh mm. to, to, to tragic events you know so i'm kind of like that this element of gratitude or thankfulness towards the situation towards the, how it shaped my life for the better yeah. in, in, a, in a much better um, uh, direction and equally the, the collateral damage to that is that I, I felt like I didn't want any other human being to, to feel the way I felt for that decade if I can yeah. ease that pain yeah. or that burden in any way, then let me help. 
because I, I assure you it's it, it's it's magical once it once that 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 pain or that grief has sort of uh, gone to the back of the mind I don't think it ever goes away but I think we yeah. learn to live with it a little bit differently so yeah that, that was amazing for me I absolutely love that did you I hope it's it, if it's okay to ask have you been able to connect with your sister? I've heard that um, for mediums, it's harder for them to connect with their own family, but I don't I don't, know. I don't think it's harder. I don't think it's harder. I think the, the problem that you have during development of mediumship is that it works in a space of the mind that you would know as imagination. Okay. So as we're learning to, to, to follow the flow or the intelligence of a communicator, it feels like you're making it up. It feels mm. like it's in your imagination. So the problem you have when you think about a loved one is you question yourself internally. Am I thinking of her? Did I want her there? Did that? Is that me just making that up? It's okay. very, very difficult to um, uh, make a difference but between is it real or is it not real? But when you have a stranger into the room and you say, I have your husband here, he tells me this, he tells me that, you know, he passes like this, he wants to talk about blah, blah, yeah. blah. Um, there is no part of me that goes, am I making this up? Yeah. Because I, I don't know that individual whatsoever. So it's a real easy <laughs> distinction between my imagination and a communicator. Yeah. It becomes really simple. So it's not that it's hard, it's whether you can find the mark or the measure between what is communication and what mm. is imagination so when they communicate to you is it like telepathy or do they give you images uh, it's, it's different for everyone um so so for, for for simple terms again it's an essence so the essence um touches my mind it's in the train of thought um, right. So I do a lot of work, or, or I did, I don't do it now, I did a lot of work uh, uh, with universities in the UK um, and uh, uh, research for neuropathways and neuroscience and, and what have you. And there's a very distinct mark when mediumship is taking place. Um, and that's what me and you would know as an altered state. We're in mm -hmm. an altered state. So in that space of altered state, there is like a, a spark, an idea, and we follow the idea. So as, as it sparks and we speak, there's another spark and then we speak and then mm. another spark. And that's how communication takes place. Wow. So, yeah, it's really simple, really. It's really easy. You've just got to speak. <laughs> that's all you've got to do. You've just got to speak. So, so now you're... I, I oh if before we talk about how you I guess you train people mm, I also wanted to yeah. open it up to you if you wanted to share any unusual experiences that you think the listeners would be interested in profound or unusual with working with I people think the most profound one is as I said to, to to you at the start of the interview is I'm very black or white it's uh so mediumship for me now is everyday life so um it's just normal you know if I if I'm in communication or it's just that it's just my life I do it every single day I travel the world doing demonstrations teaching reading you know? so it's very very normal but the most profound one that I have had um that I think maybe would be enjoyed was I was in the stage of not not being sure I wasn't sure you know like do I dedicate my life to this or don't I, I don't know so like most people, we talk up, we talk to the ceiling. I don't know why we do that, but <laughs> we, we yeah. do that. Um, yeah. and, and I remember letting my, my wife and my kids go to bed and I made sure they were in bed before I had this strange conversation, you know. I remember, uh, so I double checked, I've shut the door and I've sat down. I was like, right, right, you lot. If, if you're here, I'll give you one year to give me the evidence that I need to dedicate my life to it if you give me that i will do whatever is required to make this a career uh, mm. and i'll do it i'll do it to my last breath um and that was it end of, end of, end of story on the eighth month or the ninth month of that year um someone was doing a um 
uh, like a, a group psychometry reading. Psychometry is holding an object and reading the energy of an object. Uh, so it could be it could be my keys or my phone or um, or, or it could be a loved one's, um, uh, you know, set of earrings, necklace, ring, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we read the energy of said objects. <clears throat> so I went, I thought I'd, I want to go to this. This this would be this would be fun. Uh, and I went upstairs to where I have my sister's ring tied to the, the wick of a candle. Um, which, which was a specially made candle uh, with a blessing put on there and, mm. you know, just a decorative candle. But the purpose of the candle was so I didn't lose the ring. It would be tied to the candle. I've gone to get the ring. The ring's not there. It's gone. I don't know where it is. So I've okay. turned the entire house upside down. It looks like we've been burgled. I have emptied the house. I'm getting really <laughs> frantic. Oh I'm getting really upset. You know, it's yeah. the only thing I have of my sisters and I, I've lost it. I can't believe I've lost it. Ugh. And I, I shouted at the ceiling. I was like, this is not funny. This is the only thing I have and I've lost it. I don't know what is going on. And in that moment, it materialised on my knee. Just there. Whoa. Oh, and so I was man. Like, that's it. There's my evidence. I've got it. So, um, wow. so that week, that week I, I quit my job. I quit my job. So just without thinking twice, just quit my job. Just walked in and was like, I'm done. I've got a new, a new direction in life. And then I just spent the rest of the rest of my days up to today. Um, that was about a decade I, ago. Yeah, it was about a decade. Yeah. About yeah, a little over. Man, a decade, that's amazing. Yeah, so that would be mm -hmm. the most profound moment, I think. Um, but all the other stuff is just normal for me now. It's just normal stuff. I didn't realize you do a bunch of traveling as well and seminars and things like that. I, I knew you started teaching. How long ago did you start teaching? The teaching actually kind of fell on my lap. I didn't want to be a teacher. I didn't want to be a public medium, in all honesty. I, oh. I, it was just It kind of just came to me rather than me go to it so uh, teaching come about because I was I was due to go on a course um, that I wanted to that I wanted to do um, and I was doing my own little home circle you know like three or four friends around oh. and, and we discuss or we'll do an exercise or whatever uh, and I would develop these exercises I'd be inspired to do this or try that and we'll do it and we'd get some fantastic results um, and I ended up going on this course and after the course, um, I kind of got offered a job, like, you know what you're doing with students and, you know, other people, do you want to, do you want a job? And I was like, yeah, why not? Mm. Um, and so I did that for, for, I, I don't know, maybe three, two, three years, uh, residential courses and, uh, and what have you. And from there, it just grew and grew and grew like loads of different directions and, um, so teaching kind of found me in that sense, but I love it. I love watching someone else get it. That moment when when they the, the spirit will join them and they understand, they get it. It's intelligent and we're gonna and you, you sit, they they light up differently. There's a different illumination to them. Um, and that for mm. me is magical. I love I love uh, because you know in that very moment, their life is never going to be the same again, you know, because they're, they're, they, they felt it, they, they've been part of it, um, which means um, you change who you are to an extent because you, you know that it goes on after life, it does go on, which makes you and your actions think about things differently. You know, like if I am horrible to someone and there is an afterlife, I'm accountable for that. And so you kind of like, I need to maybe change the way I do things or the way I say things or, you know, my thoughts, my <clears throat> action, my integrity, mm -hmm. um, my, my morals, then things get adjusted because you know, you know, there's more, you know, that it don't just stop um, and, and the, the slate gets cleaned as such. So, um, so it made me think about me. That's what it did. Mm -hmm. And and that changed that changed me rather than 
you know, being hurt by a, a story, a victim of my own story, or, you know, because they were nasty doesn't mean that I should be nasty. Right. I should be, I should be a better person, really. Um, whereas, you know, 15 years ago, I would, I would just be nasty back. So it's just, hmm. it's one of those. So. So you're yeah. a better man because of it. I, I think I am. I think I am. I mean, I'm yeah. sure there's people out there that would say I'm not, but I, I think I'm a much better person. I, I like the man I am now yeah. in comparison to the man that I was. W- would you want your wife or kids to do this, to learn how to do this? Or do, do they have any interest in uh, learning? My, 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 two da- my two daughters do. Um, so, um, but the, the oldest daughter is um, 20, 21. Um, so she's got life going on right now. So it's just not gonna, not gonna happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and my youngest one, she's 12. Uh, she's got an interest, but it, mm-hmm. I think that's as far as it goes. Okay. Um, uh, both of them have tried and both of them have been successful when I taught them to do it. Um, so yeah, wow. I think, I think, I think they need to have a little bit of life experience first. And once they've got a few mistakes under their belt, I think they'll learn from it by doing some sort of uh, development or journey. So yeah, th- I think the two girls will. Oh, very interesting. And I'm so curious if you've learned anything about the afterlife that you could share with us that you mm-hmm. know people want to know about. Yeah, I, I think that the, the, problem, the problem we have <laughs> um that I see the world over it's not just not just here or on my YouTube or your YouTube it's not it's it's not like that the problem we have is that it's it's restricted to the idea of an individual so so what I mean is that if I've got someone's mum here Mm -hmm. everything that I say can be validated everything can be absolutely that's absolutely correct that's exactly what she did that's exactly her name how old she was her home address her telephone number all of these things can be validated but whatever I say with the afterlife there is no validation until we get there so I'm in quite a powerful position where I can say this is what happens and there will be some people that that hang on my every word for it Mm -hmm. Um, and so I am quite mindful of of the power of that so um, I know a lot of people what what I do know is that Everything is of um, um, an evidential nature. So it can all be validated. They talk about who they were Mm -hmm. factually. So everything's factual. But it's not, it's not, um, you don't take the human traits with you, you know, like jealousy, envy. Mm. You don't take these things because they see, the whole picture Mm. so um so like people are angry usually because um someone was duped or they were lied to or you know in a in a way or excluded from Um, but there's always a reason why someone has lied or someone has excluded someone from something there's always a reason why and that side they know all the ingredients that involve mm-hmm. the situation. So we have no reason for the, the five senses of a human body um, to, be, uh, to be that side of life because it's their spirit that is that side, not the human body. We are very restricted through the five senses that we have. Um, very, very restricted. And, and for the viewers, they would probably only understand that um, if we try to express something, but we don't have the language, it's like, I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to, that's incredibly frustrating. Oh, yeah. Um, so, so that would be the closest that people could understand. So what goes on the other side? I, I don't know. I'm here. I'm literally here with you and the viewers watching the video. I can only ever talk about what they asked me to talk about. That's my daughter in front of you. Let her know this. Let her know that. uh, To which would be validated. So that's why my title would fall under evidential medium Mm -hmm. uh, rather than um, theory. Can't be validated. 
Okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure um, the difference between evidential medium or just when someone says they're a medium. Yeah. Isn't it? Wouldn't that, it still be evidential or no? Not really. Not all the time. A lot of people fall into a trap of subjectiveness. You know, I've got a lady here, and she oh. and, and she loves you. Oh, I see. Does she? How how do we know that? Is there is there evidence to support that? Okay. Um. So yeah. Um. A, a lot of people will will say things like um um the the robin that arrived in the garden was sent from the spirit world it's just not my style of mediumship okay um which it's a beautiful thought for someone an absolutely beautiful thought and i i wouldn't take that thought away if that's how you perceive it that's brilliant but i prefer evidence to to mm. support what it is that's um taking place so yeah. i have your person here and and then bring loads of evidence to support that Mm. does a tremendous amount of healing within an individual so it's just it that's just my my area you know there's so many areas in mediumship so mm. um, well, I'm, I'm based. Oh, yeah I'm brand new to to this kind of world and learning so much with every guest so I yeah. I mean it's so fun for me yeah absolutely. Um, it's magical. The, the thing is that you find the magic in different areas all of the time. So when you become well versed in anything you do, uh, there's this potential of being bored. You know, mm -hmm. I'm done. I've mastered it. I've got that. The, the great thing with a spiritual journey is you never master it. You just get more questions. Uh, <laughs> That's which, true. Which go deeper and deeper and deeper. Yeah. And you find more and more and more that the, the, the magic just moves on and moves on and moves on. So it's forever with you with, with, within it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you take a student of mediumship day one, they're, they're mesmerized by making them aware of the energy that just surrounds them. They're mesmerized by it. But to a medium that's done it for 20 years, they're like, well, of course it's energy. Of course it's there. The, the magic <laughs> lost in that moment because mm. they, they've been doing it for 20 years. But their magic will be found somewhere else during the development of their mediumship. So, so for me, um, I shared earlier on in the conversation, I love seeing you light up if you if you connect right. through the spirit world or, or any of the viewers, if they're in a classroom and, and they light up, I'm like, oh, there's that moment. There's that moment. Exactly. I remember it so well. And it's just so rewarding in that sense. It's so fulfilling. Um, and it's just that that feeling of um, um, of being good. Here's, here's a, a, a good thing. Here's a piece of me. This is what I found. Try it. Oh, my God, that feels amazing. Yeah. Uh, it's just so, so rewarding. Um, I love it. That's what I love about it. It's just never ending. It's the one thing I've never got bored of. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. So crazy. That's, it is crazy. It's that this is so wonderful. You, and you do look excited about it. You do. I see you lighting up when you talk about these things. So you, yeah, you, I, it seems I like you're still I, into I, it. Yeah, I think I'm. A, I think I'm being very uh, not reserved, but I'm very mindful that we're we're on record and and what goes out there. But anyone that knows Charlie um they they know how passionate i am about the work that i do and uh -huh. um it, it's 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 across the board you know through the demonstrations through the teaching through through interviews articles whatever it is it's it's just it's never ending never ending which i love about it i really love about it um, so how how would i know if i would be a good candidate to train uh, we, if, if you've got an active brain, which you clearly have because you're asking me questions and interacting with me, then you are more than equipped to do it, more than equipped. Um, it's just now we have to just show you what's imagination and what is not imagination, what's communication through, mm. through evidence. So it's really, really simple. So I work with loads and loads of new people. I work with loads of uh, intermediate and loads of professionals. So I've got a, a I, I, it has to be simple um, uh, for, for me to sort of um, do it the way that I do it. It's got to be easy. So I've just got to find the easiest way. And then when I find the easiest way, mm -hmm. I give I give that to someone else and they show me that it works perfectly. Uh, I feel good wow. about that. They feel good about that. So, so yes, you are more than equipped to do it, more than equipped. And so, so how, it, oh, sorry, go ahead. I, I think 
when when you work in or on a spiritual journey in any way um the problem you have is to the to the skeptic no evidence is enough and to the believer no evidence is required so you've got to find where you sit on that spectrum mm -hmm. are you skeptical or do is there is there something inside of you that says there might be something else um then that's all you need to be able to do mediumship that's yeah it. if you're completely I, close to the idea you're never going to do it right yeah i'm definitely open i mean i, I always thought I, of myself as more of an open-minded skeptic but uh, more open yeah. uh, i mean i definitely know there's more i mean yeah, i know i you know as far as other people's experiences and you know i'm open to that but if it's not my experience then it's more of a i, oh. I think i think that's the biggest mistake in 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 a spiritual journey um is people talking about their um their spiritual journey it's the biggest mistake that that i can see since uh, the late 1800s mm. it just repeats itself over and over again the problem we have is the the human ego I want to sound good. I want it to sound amazing. I want it to look good. When actual facts, it's very personal. It's a very personal thing. Uh, so my relationship with my guide team, whatever term we need there, or my spirit world, it is personal to me. Mm -hmm. um, and, and likewise with you, your relationship with a, with a, with spiritual guides, beings, whatever, is very personal to you. Uh, it, it amazes me how much people talk about a relationship very openly across the the medias. Hmm. Um, it, it, uh, at no point would I talk about my my um, my partner. At no point would I do that and spread that across the world for people to be part of. It's a very hmm. uh, intimate relationship that I share with someone else. Um, everyone knows that, but they don't need the the finer detail of that. I think hmm. that has to be learned by you for you uh, mm. to help you grow so I, I i think it's best that we just get direction try over there and let me know how you feel about it and you'll be i love it i didn't like that whatever it will be yeah um, but we don't hold it against anything we just move on to the next lesson the next exercise mm. the next experience so yeah i think that's a huge problem right mm. now so yeah well i I've really enjoyed this conversation and I so want the listeners to be able to get a hold of you. So <laughs> how do they do that? And I'm going to put links up in the video description. Yeah, of course. So, um, it, it depends what they're looking for. If they're looking for more of this kind of video stuff, then that would be YouTube and that's medium Charlie Kelly. Uh, oh, okay. Just on YouTube um, where there's, I don't know, 300 videos and there's, um, I've taken a year out because of my diary, but the videos will be starting again soon mm. uh, into the new year um, and they'll be relaunched with, um, you know, understanding. It's just, if you want an idea, it's there. Um, if you want teaching, then the best place would be the website, mediumcharliekelly.co.uk. Okay. Uh, where there are uh, all classes for all levels, for all um, themes and scenarios uh, are all available there. Um, and Facebook is where you get the, the, the quickest response, um, uh, which is Medium Charlie Kelly Facebook page, um, where any inquiries are kind of dealt with uh on an hourly basis that that thing never shuts up so <laughs> um, so yeah that's that's kind of it really it's all medium charlie kelly it's okay just, um youtube.co.uk or facebook okay cool um and before we sign off i want to leave you with the last words anything else that you feel like oh man i really wanted to share that or anything on your heart um I, I think, I, I, in, you know, in the journey that I've had so far, I think there's so many people that are, um, that are sat on a pedestal, you know, people look up to or look down on. Um, and, and I think that, that as I was expressing there just earlier, that the journey is unique. It, it hasn't got to be quick. It hasn't got to be super fast. No, you may not even want careers out of it. It's just a better understanding. Then I, I think you've got to like follow that intuition yourself. 
it's a navigational system that we have and it hasn't got to be all woo woo or love and light and rainbows and unicorns it can be very blunt and very direct mm. uh, the way the way I am and the way my system is um so it's just it's just one of them don't don't be pressured into um doing things that don't really suit you or your mm-hmm. style I mean you've got you've got this one this one experience for the personality that you are you know me or you um and you've got a, an opportunity to learn as much as you can in a in a set time frame you know there's we're, we're limited aren't we it's gonna it's gonna end one day mm-hmm. I'd, ra- I'd rather people didn't waste it just wasting away doing things yeah. they don't want to do and you yeah. know in 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 situations they don't want to be in um if i've learned anything over my journey was uh if i followed without it being all love and lighty i followed my heart in wanting to do this forever um and, and i quit my job um the job that was keeping a roof over my head gave me financial security and you know all of those things and i just threw it away um knowing that my heart weren't leading me astray Mm. um and so there was a huge um uh turbulent period there you Mm. know I was scared or I don't know where to go but then it all fell into place and it all started working out because I loved it or love it I still do it now you know so I think yeah we're it's not long enough that we're here for so Mm spend the time in whatever way you can that is fulfilling for you as an individual i like that cool i like that a lot (laughs) all right well we are out of time this has been wonderful thank you for having me yeah many many thanks to you uh charlie medium charlie kelly (laughs) officially um and thank you to everyone for watching this has been julie mcveigh with unordinary made ordinary and i hope you will join us next time for another fascinating interview and of course if you enjoyed this give it a thumbs up and then um if you like this type of content please subscribe and um i do hope you're having a fantastic day or evening wherever you are on the planet or off the planet. And we'll see you next time. Bye.